G'day and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kathy. This video is part two in a series of tips and more advanced options in relation to your QNAP NAS. If you haven't already seen part one, I will link it somewhere up here. Okay, I'm going to timestamp this video and list the timestamps in my description box below if you'd like to skip ahead to any particular point. Remote access, how to access your NASA's when you're not at home. Very, very useful. If you're anywhere out and about and you need to be able to retrieve a file or a document on your NASA's, you can do so. But you need to set up your cloud link to QNAP in order to do that. QNAP Cloud Link is pretty much just another cloud service, but it is a private one which connects to your NAS to retrieve the files. We are now back in QTS user interface. This is one of my NASs that actually isn't registered to the cloud and I'm going to walk you through how to do it. You're going to go up to the top where it says main menu and you're going to find my QNAP cloud. So you're going to press on get started. It'll go through a wizard. So we're going to start. Now, if you have not registered a QNAP ID, basically it's simply an account, you'll click on this and it'll take you into this window where you sign up. Now, I have already registered a QNAP ID account, so I'm just going to put in the details and now we're going to proceed to the next step. Here is where you need to give your device a name. If that name has already been used by another user, with QNAP, then you'll need to find something inventive. Okay, this name is available. It will auto configure everything here. Now you can limit as to who has access to your NAS. I at the moment have it on public, but you can choose private. And now it is going through the process of registering my device. Now it's given me a summary and what it's doing is testing that the configuration of your router, which you don't need to do anything about. It's just done automatically by QNAP. Okay, we're now in my other NAS, simply because the other one is far too slow. Once it's been configured automatically, you'll see all these green ticks, which indicates that it is connected. Now, in order for you to access your NAS remotely, there are several ways. You can use the smart URL, which is up here. And if we click on that, this is now going through the QNAP cloud service rather than through my home network. And you'll see you just get the similar login. And you're going to log in just as you would normally do it at home. You put in your username and password, etc. The other way to access your QNAP cloud link is down here where it says internet address. You can also simply type this in to a web browser and it will connect you directly to your NAS where you log in just like you normally would. You just need to remember your QNAP ID and the URL, the address. The other thing I wanted to talk about is you can set up your QNAP NAS to send you email notifications or SMS notifications, which I think is incredibly useful. I have my NASA set up to send me a notification if I have errors, if there's a firmware update, and I recommend that you always update your firmware, simply because it will close any holes in the security which will allow people to hack your NAS. And I will show you how you can set it up and create your own rules as to what you want to receive notifications about. If you go up into the main menu, you will see the notification center is here. You can also find it in the control panel. It is under system. In overview, you'll see when you receive event notifications, alert notifications, etc. You can also go into global notification settings and decide what you want to receive messages about. 
I have firmware ticked and firmware updates. Now in order to decide which method you want to use to receive notifications, you will go into service, account and device pairing. I've already paired my email. If you want to receive SMS notifications, you will need to sign up for a service, which will mean that you'll have to pay. You can also use instant messaging and you can also use a push service. In order to have a push service, you will need to install Q Manager on your mobile and I'm going to show you how to do that later. Now to create your own rules as to what you want to receive notifications about, you are going to go under system notification rules. You're going to go into create rule. Now we don't want on everything, so we will unselect up here and you can decide here. What do you want to receive a notification about? We're going to go into firmware update. We're going to select it. Then we're going to go into next. Okay, what do we want? Do we want information only or a warning or an error? You can add includes or excludes. Say so includes update. Then you can go into next. And you can say I want it under email or instant messaging. For me personally, an email is sufficient. So the sender is going to be me and the recipient is also going to be me. But you can send it to any email address that you choose. This is a summary and we're going to finish. And if we want to preview it, we're going to click on this I. If you ever want to edit it, you can go into here. I just wanted to show you that with your NASAs, you will be getting event notifications up here next to where your username is. You'll see that there's a little information icon here. When it's orange, it's a warning. When it's red, it's an error. If they're just plain old blue, then it's just a notification. And I wanted to show you how my security levels are giving me a warning that somebody has been trying to hack my NAS. And if we click on it, it will take us to the system logs, which will give us a little bit more information about what this warning is. In this instance, it is somebody who was trying to hack my NAS they made several attempts, so QNAP blocked them. But I do find this little icon up the top a very useful way of keeping track of what's going on with your NAS. The process for accessing files on your phone or tablet is pretty much the same. You need to install certain apps that QNAP brings out, which you can get from the Google Play Store if you are an Android user. For Apple users, you'll use the App Store. I think it's the iOS App Store. As you can tell, I'm not an Apple user, but I think that's accurate. And these apps that I'm going to mention are available for either platform. If I haven't mentioned it already, these are all free. QNet produces them and they're all free to use and there's no advertising, thank heaven. But the first one you will need to download is the app called QFile. I wanted to point out that you do not have to have CloudLink in order to use any of these apps on your phone or tablet. However, if you do have CloudLink, then by adding your NASAs through CloudLink, you will be able to access the files on your NASAs, whether you're on your home network or whether you are out and about. Basically, QFile is a file station. Once QFile is set up, it is in QFile that you will find the settings for automatically backing up files from your phone or tablet to your NAS. You can either set it up to just back up photos or videos, or you can set it up to back up a particular folder on your phone or tablet, and you can set it up to do so automatically. I'm going to assume you have already download a Q file from whichever app store you're going to use. And once it's installed, you're going to open it up and it'll run through a summary of what it does. 
As I said, it's a file manager. It is through QFile that you will be able to access all the files on your NAS, on your phone or tablet. Now, the first thing you'll need to do, and I'm assuming you have set up your cloud link, is you are going to need to sign in to your cloud link with your QNAP ID. And once you've logged in, it will then add all the NASs that you have registered to the cloud link. And as you can see, there is a little blue icon next to the NAS, and that indicates that that is also a CloudLink device. Once the CloudLink has added the NASs, you still need to log into your NAS the way you would on the web browser using your administrator account. And now this is a screenshot of all the folders, shared folders that I have on my NAS. Now to set up QFile to automatically upload files. For example, we're going to do photos now. You're going to order upload. You're going to press set up now and you can choose what you're going to upload, whether it's photos or videos. And then you need to select a folder on your NAS where you want those files, those photos or videos to be backed up. Now I have set mine to only upload automatically on Wi-Fi, not when I'm out and about. It's your choice whether you want to use that or not. Now, there are several settings. I'm not going to go through every one. You really need to go through them yourself and make decisions as to what applies to you and what doesn't. In order to upload a particular folder on your phone or tablet, you are going to go under Auto Upload Files from Selected Folders. Now the process is pretty much the same. You will choose which folder on your phone you want to be backed up to the NAS and you will choose the location on your NAS where you want that folder to be copied. And again, you can decide whether to do so when it's on Wi-Fi, when it's charging or whatever you prefer. Now, if you want to access any of the files on your NAS, you will simply click on the shared folders. QManager is an app where you get to see how your NAS is doing, if there are any issues, if there's things going on in the background, you can check the system resources, the resource monitors and things like that. However, I will say that I think that the QManager app is quite limited. You can certainly not do as much as you can through the QTS user interface. But if you need a quick overview of what is going on with your NAS, then it is useful. When installing QManager, you will use the same steps that I showed you under QFile. The process is identical. The only difference is that if you install QManager on your phone, it will also give you the option of selecting to have push notifications. Multimedia. QNAP has several dedicated apps which you can use to stream, say, video files or music to your phone or tablet. I'll be putting up screenshots of the apps so you can see what they look like. These apps are called Q Music, Video Station, there's also Q Photo, there's Q Magi. I think you can see the trend here. Most of the apps have the prefix of Q. Now, if you did want to use any of these apps, you need to enable the multimedia console in your QTS user interface. You don't have to use their dedicated apps. If you have an alternative media player that you prefer to say watch films on or listen to music on, then you can use those. So now I'm going to take you to my computer and I'm going to show you how to enable the multimedia console as well as what it does. In order to install multimedia console, you're going to go into the app center. You can do a search for it up here, or you can go under utilities and then install it. Once it's installed, you're going to open it up. Now this is an overview of my multimedia console. You will need to enable it. What it will then do is index all the files, media files, and it would also create thumbnails. Depending upon how many media files you have will determine how long the indexing and thumbnail generation will take. 
under Multimedia App Suite, you will decide which apps you want to install. You can use QMagi, which is, I think, a more refined version of PhotoStation. has a very good face recognition software, I believe. There's also the photo station, video station, music station, etc. Now under content management, you can see which apps I have actually installed on this NAS. Now that Multimedia Console has been enabled, you can now install the apps such as the video station, QMusic or QPhoto or QMagi etc on your phone or tablet and when you install those you're going to go through the same process that you did with QFile. Now many of these apps which you use on your phone or tablet you can actually cast them to say a TV or to a home speaker like a smart speaker like Google or Alexa which I think is fantastic. Now with all these apps Obviously, it depends on how powerful your phone or your tablet is as to how well they perform, just with anything. Generally speaking, music doesn't eat a lot of the resources on our phones or tablets. Video files, however, can. So it will depend on what kind of video file it is and whether your phone or tablet can handle it. Ultimately, you can download them. If you don't like them, you can uninstall them. It's entirely up to you. streaming to a television. Okay, this is where it can get complicated. There are several ways you can do so and ultimately it will depend on what kind of television you have. If you have a smart TV, it will depend on the brand and really I can't go through all the different brands so you will need to do some research yourself as to what your smart TV is capable of. Now I have an old TV that is not smart but it's still working very well. And in order for me to be able to access the media files on my NAS, I use an Android TV box, specifically a NVIDIA Shield. I'm also a big, big fan of Kodi, and I use Kodi as my media player to play all my movies, TV shows, music, etc. Kodi is quite a complicated process and I'm going to definitely dedicate at least one video to setting it up. But that is one option. You don't have to have a NVIDIA Shield box. You can get any Android TV box. And most of them should give you the option of installing Kodi on that. And you can use that as your media player. You can use an Android TV box either with an old television that isn't smart or a new television as well that is smart. There is also the Plex media server. I have no experience with Plex so I'm not going to cover it in this video and I do believe there are a lot of videos out there as to how to set it up. Now my understanding is that Kodi is better if you want to stream locally at home for example whereas Plex may be a better option if you also wish to stream video files for example outside of the home when you're out and about. That's my understanding. Another difference between the two is that Kodi is free. It's an open source program. Plex does have a free service but apparently if you want any bells and whistles you'll need to pay a subscription fee. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. In the next one I'm intending to cover backup. I think it's really important that I go through the different processes available for backing up your important files and I suspect it's going to take an entire video to do it. Well thank you very much for watching. If you like this video you can give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already you can subscribe to my channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Until next time, take care guys. Bye.